Bree with Calafia Candle Company. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about room and linen sprays. So I do have a video that I made maybe last year or the year before, I don't really remember, on how I make my room and linen sprays, but I have recently changed it up. So I figured I would share with you guys how I am currently making them now. Here's what they look like and we will get into that. But before we do, I did just receive a package in the mail that I'm excited about and I thought I could go over these with you guys before we jump into the video. So I ordered five sample fragrances from Northwood Distributing and I've never tried any of their fragrance oils and I have not smelt these yet. So we'll do a little first impressions sniff test. So up first we have Sleigh Ride and this one has notes of pine, apple, cinnamon, bayberry, and holly. So let's go ahead and see what this one smells like. Mmm, that is just a classic Christmas scent. This actually reminds me of Christmas Cabin from Midwest Fragrance Company, which I typically use every year. So that smells very similar to that. I love that. Next up, we have Alpine Cheer, and this one is a type, so it is supposed to be a dupe for a Bath & Body Works fragrance, and it has notes of fir needle, cinnamon stick, cranberries, crisp apple, and cedar wood. So let's give it a go. Ooh, that is really nice, actually. That is a good, a balance of kind of that Christmas tree scent, but also a little bit of spice and a little bit of wood. I really like that one. Okay, now we have Farmhouse Christmas and I really like the font they used on the label for that. That is super cute. So this one has notes of pine, apple, raspberry, strawberry, spice, and woods. So I'm expecting this one to be a little bit sweeter with those berries in there. Let's see. Mmm, mm-hmm. Definitely on the sweeter side, but really nice. Again, kind of a good balance of all of those Christmassy scents in one. Ooh, that's a really nice one actually. And up next we have Winter Morning. And for this one, it says sweet musks, light florals, and crisp greens. That sounds really refreshing. Ooh, wow. Oh, I like that one a lot. That could almost be a year round scent actually, not just for the holidays. Oh, that is really nice. I like that a lot. It smells clean and I do get the florals in there, but also the greenery as well. I really like that one. All right, and last but not least, we have Holiday Cookie Tray. This is not a fragrance I would typically go for. I don't usually go for the bakery scents, but I thought I would give it a whirl. So this one has notes of sweet buttercream, caramel, almond, orange, sugar cookie, coconut shavings, vanilla icing, vanilla cream, and milk. Quite a lot in there. And I have a feeling it is going to be sweet. So let's see. Oh yeah, that is definitely sweet, but it smells good. Hmm, I actually like that a lot more than I was expecting to. That is really good, actually. I like them all, wow. I think my favorite, though, is probably the winter morning one. That one was really good. So those are the samples I ordered from Northwood. Um, I will link them down below just if you guys are curious. And now we can go ahead and jump into the room sprays. So the change that I've made with how I'm currently making my room sprays is the base. If you've watched my older video, which I will put a card up on the screen in case you want to check it out, I did make my own base, but now I'm actually using a pre-made base from Midwest Fragrance Company. So this is their room spray base and it just has made life so much easier because you literally just mix the fragrance into this. So you're not mixing four ingredients together. It just makes it a lot easier. Another thing that I really enjoy about this base is that it actually contains a natural odor eliminating aspect to it. 
So instead of just covering up a smell, it actually helps to neutralize the odor and it has odor attacking enzymes in it. So that has been awesome. And I find that the fragrance lasts a lot longer than the way I was doing it before actually. So another plus to it. The one thing I will say is that it does cost a little bit more to use this, but in my opinion, it's worth it because it's saving a lot of time. And like I said, it has that odor eliminating aspect. So I really enjoy having that in there as well. And just to give you guys some numbers, uh, my old cost of goods for the Ola Vista room spray was $2.24 when I made the base myself. And then now with this, it is $4.07. So while that does sound like a big jump, I'm still at a 70% margin for those. So I don't mind that at all. And I think it's worth it with the, the amount of time that it saves. Okay, so now let's go over the supplies that I use to make the room sprays. So we have the base that we just talked about. I have fragrance oil. This one is mango and coconut milk from Midwest Fragrance Company. I have this glass little beaker here that I pour the fragrance oil in, a scale. I have a plastic pouring pitcher back here with a little funnel. Those are on my Amazon storefront, so are the scale and the beaker. And then the bottles that I use are from Glass Bottle Outlet. I will link them down below. They are the four ounce Boston round uh, bottles, the amber ones. And I really have loved using these. I think they're really pretty. And then I have some gloves, paper towels and alcohol, and then a little skewer for pouring the room spray out. So let's go ahead and do some calculations before we jump in. Okay, don't mind that this is a little weekday calendar whiteboard. I'm just going to use this to show you guys how you can calculate how much fragrance oil and how much base you need for one bottle. So for my bottles, they are four ounces. I like to work in grams, so that comes out to about 113 grams. So we're just going to take that number and we're going to multiply that by whatever percentage fragrance load you choose to go with. So for me, I like to do the 5%, but you can do whatever you desire. So I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.05, and that gives us 5.65. I'm just gonna round up and call it 5.7. So that is how much fragrance oil we need for one bottle. And then to find out how much base we need, you simply just subtract that number from the starting amount of 113. So 113 grams minus 5.7 grams, and that gives us 107.3. And that is what we need for the base. And then of course, if you wanna make multiple bottles of the same, fragrance, you would just multiply those two numbers by however many you want to make. So if you want to make five bottles at once, just multiply each of these by five and that will give you the amounts that you need. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out my base. So I'm going to go ahead and use this skewer here to kind of strain the base out so it doesn't go spilling down the side of the bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside and then I'm going to weigh out my fragrance oil. Okay, the next step is to combine the two and I totally forgot a supply. We need something to stir with. So I have this silicone spatula here and they recommend adding the fragrance oil very slowly. They also do suggest a magnetic stirrer. I had no idea what that was um, when I first read that when they launched this base, so I had to look it up. I didn't order one of those, but you totally can, or you can just slowly add it and mix, which is what I do. So I like to just kind of hold the beaker there on the edge and let it slowly come out and then just stir. So 
So once I have the fragrance oil all in there, I'll just kind of stir it for about another 30 seconds or so. Alrighty, and then once that is all stirred, we are ready to put it in the bottle. So normally if I was making uh, more than one at a time, which I typically make four or five at a time, I would weigh each jar as I'm pouring them because I want to make sure that they all have 113 grams. So I would put the little funnel in there, make sure that the scale is at zero and then weigh out 113 grams take it off, put the lid on, put the next one on, tear it, etc. But since we're just doing one, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it on in. There we go. I give this a little shake before I pull it out. Put the lid on. And there we have our room spray. And you can see how clear it is. The old way that I used to make them, they would turn out a little bit cloudy. So I just absolutely love how clear this formula is. All right, so I just wiped the bottle down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply my labels. So I make these on Canva and then I print them out using the Maestro label designer from online labels. If you purchase labels from online labels, you do get a year access, um, a year long access to their Maestro label designer. And I'm putting these on with the label ledge. This is what I like to use to put my labels on the bottles. It just helps them get on there a little bit straighter than if I was just trying to eye it. So there we have the front label and then I'll just flip it over and do the back. And there we have the finished room spray. Well, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.